Welcome to Uncade, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we've got Mark Havercroft on the show. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm good. Great to be here. It's great to talk to you, Mark. You know, Mark, I... I, I uh, I remember when we were really kind of just getting going in Australia, talking to you many, many years ago. And, and wow, your career has really kind of taken off since then. Uh, Mark is the Global Chief Customer Officer for SAP, uh, the SAP Success Factors. And Mark will take us through a little bit more about what uh, SAP Success Factors are up to uh, nowadays. Before we get there, Tell us a little bit about this journey that you've been on. Yeah, it's you know, I, I joined uh, SAP. I've been there six years now. And in SAP terms, it's like still in onboarding, right? You know, the company's been around, well, a lot longer than we have, I think, and will be around a lot longer than, than, than we are. But, um, you know, 50 years ago, it started in the world of ERP. And for those non-techie people out there, that's the, they, they kind of invented that whole new category of business systems for to help us run our businesses. And now, you know, we're in the middle of uh, becoming a cloud company, um, change of leadership, 110,000 people. You know, I always uh, say we're uh, like an oil tanker turning to meet the market, you know, and getting up that, uh, that, that momentum. And it's been, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic ride. I, I joined um, previously to my time at IBM, really helping big technology companies acquire these cloud businesses. But, um, you know, bring them into their business and keep the value and, and, you know, also be able to tell that story to the market and to the customers um, and, dare I say it, to investors and, and, and uh, all other stakeholders as well. So um, I've been on a journey of watching the world change, trying to change from within in big companies, which I'm sure some of your audience will, uh, will attest to those scars of uh, convincing people the world is round now as opposed to flat when you go through that internal change. Um, but it's been great. And I think the, 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 the big thing that I've enjoyed is that, um, you know, we've really seen our technology play a part in the changing face of the world and play a part in a good way. You know, whether it's just been helping companies find out um, how people are doing through the pandemic, engaging with their companies, keeping their jobs, helping them keep their jobs. And in some cases, in a lot of cases now, thrive in their new jobs. Um, helping organizations work out that actually a lot of good has come out of this pandemic and that we can take a lot of that good into um, the way people work. And it kind of, you know, falls under the, you know, SAP's purpose really, which is, you know, making people's lives better. And unfortunately, um, or fortunately, whichever you want to look at it, we're all going to be stuck at work till we're like 80 or 100, according to the latest <laughs> research. So, um I'm glad that we're able to bring technology to enhance people's lives at work, not remove their jobs, but make their jobs better. Um, and, you know, help us all plot a way through this crazy world. Mate. So, yeah, it's been an absolute yeah. roller coaster and, 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 and continues to be. And, and I think that uh, with your career, Mark, one of the interesting things, obviously, is that the depth of technological understanding that you have, but also bringing that together with that sense of, of the people, of the company, mm. talent, um, and then doing it in in, in kind of a, a human way. Tell me a little bit more about how that plays into what SAP success, success factors is up to. Well, it, it, it plays into it in a couple of ways. I think the, the biggest high level thing for me is I uh, challenge the status quo. And I know that's a lovely phrase to say. And let me, tell you, let me be practical with that. Um, a lot of times in business, we always do things because, well, that's the way we've always done it, right? Um, or that's a great idea, but the system won't let you do that, you know? And so, you know, really what I do is coming into these organizations and working with their customers and the organizations and say, well, just because that's the way we've always done it doesn't mean to say it's the best way now. And I know that's an obvious thing for us to say, but it's it's a big thing to change. And particularly the bigger the organization and, and the longer the way that they've always done it has been around, right? Um, so I've always really looked at the opportunity that technology brings to the individual, to an organization, and help them, you know, see past the 
the concerns or the worry about change. And in particular with technology, it was always seen as the beast that kind of would eat your job or would, you know, it was never a good thing, right? Because we all have that image of robots on the manufacturing line, I think. And that's where it all stems from. So, I, you know, for me, it's always been around um, bringing technology to customers to get better outcomes from their business. So I've always had a business understanding and brought people and technology as the ingredients to, to, to new ways of doing it. Um, and also a degree of optimism in the essence of, um, you know, as we know, life can be pretty, pretty, pretty bad and pretty tough. But there is. There is opportunity in those areas and it's, you know, it's how you, you know, how you pick yourself up and how you dust yourself off and how you find opportunity, I think. And so, you know, in success back design and the SAP side, I think it's been about, OK, um, you know, like it or not. And this isn't a plug, but, you know, 80, 90 percent of big businesses use our systems to run their businesses. And if those businesses aren't there, there's no jobs there. Right. So we really dug in and. Um, you know, blew away some of the old kind of technology myths and, and, and have really opened up free services and free products, created a, a, a huge business network across all our customers so they can find new suppliers, find new customers. Um, in essence, we've opened up our customers to each other and said, hey, you know, sit around our dinner table and let's see how we can do, do business and, and yeah, keep going. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a fascinating idea, especially when you have such a, a, a large customer base but essentially, uh, not only networking it technologically, but networking it physically <laughs> yeah. With, yeah. With, 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 with the people. Is that, is that a trend that you think is, we're going to see as, um, as other, with other businesses? Or is that something that, yeah. we're, that you guys have pioneered? Look, I, I think, um, like many occasions, SAP have been the first to stick their hand up for it. I mean, um, you know, we looked at it as the pandemic hit and realized that, you know, we had companies that lost their suppliers straight away and they couldn't, you know, get the bits to produce what they needed to produce. What we simply did, just like anybody in a, in a, in a, in a situation room, we went, hang on a minute. We have customers who are suppliers. We have customers who are man. We, we know all these people, but they're segregated. They do business with us, but they're not necessarily. So it was kind of a, you know, it's an obvious thing in times of crisis to go, OK, how do we join them back together? How do we help them connect together to make a business supply chain? Right. And so, yeah, we, we, we did that. And do I think it will happen more? Absolutely. I think um, one thing you should expect from your technology suppliers going forward is, um, you know, the ability for them to work together based on what you want to be. I always call it, you know, historically, when I talk internally, I talk to customers, and this might be a throwback to my UK days, but it used to be a comedy show, and they would give this thing of uh, computer says no every time somebody had an idea. She would, it's funny anyway, it's funny, but um, it's such, a, it's such a, a thing that I hear everywhere. It's like, hey, Mark, yeah, we could do this. Oh, yeah, but our systems won't let you. That, that phrase from your technology provider should just be the instant phrase where you say, OK, well, let's find another technology provider because there is a way to do everything. And we've learned that. Um, and so, yeah, you'll see more of that from from SAP. And what you'll also see more of from us is is doing it based on the values that we have for society. So, for example, one of the things we're looking at now with that business network, connecting people and businesses, is if you think about it, we're in a genuine position where we can affect climate change. We can show our suppliers and we can put information out there that says, hey, this supplier is carbon neutral or isn't carbon neutral. We, I was having a conversation with BMW um, about this very fact. And they were saying, you know, within their factory, they can tell you how much emissions they make to make a car. But Mark, it's the supply chain. It's our suppliers to our factories and things. And, you know, to genuinely give us as a consumer buying something that is made that is good for the planet that we can continue things like that business network we can do that with our customers we can help them you know do that kind of thing so again yes is the short answer but i think it's the tip of the iceberg buddy i think it really is the tip of the iceberg. wow i mean i mean that you have my head spinning because uh one of the biggest topics that i've been talking a lot about are these you know the sdg type of initiatives and how mm. everyone's been trying to seek better measures you know how do you how do you track that how do you yeah. uh, and how do you track it with with some form of meaning and i think really what you're getting at mark is is 
almost like the holy grail what what everyone is looking for right how exactly. do you how do you actually look at it through the whole ecosystem and 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 hold companies accountable or even help companies make that something that is a, a unique selling point for them uh, yeah. going forward. So I think that's a really, really fascinating area. But you yeah. know, I'm going to change gears a little bit here and ask you, because I know that you have a, a broader remit than, than lovely Australia. You, and, yes. And uh, I, can, I don't know how difficult it must have been over the last year you know, managing the Asian region um, during COVID. Tell me a little bit about your experience with that and, and, and learnings. Yeah, look, you know, it's, you know, even people internally ask me that because I think, um, you know, for me, you're right. I, I'm, uh, I, I, I kind of lead in a global position in our leadership team success. And that's, you know, let's be honest, it's, it's quite a rarity to see somebody outside of North America or Europe because we've always kind of thought talent must be near the headquarters, right? Well, I think the good thing with SAP is we've operated on a remote talent-driven basis for some time. So, um, you know, I was grateful to get the role and still be based in Australia. And in the days I would have great travel in California and Europe and everything. And so the, the way that I do it is the way that I've, you know, I'm, I guess I've told our customers and how I believe in leadership. And that is... Um, by empowering my regional leaders. I know that sounds like a really kind of hr -y thing to say, right? But let, let me just break that down for you. And again, me being Mr. Pragmatic. Um, <clears throat> having worked through a company or worked up, you know, from the sales floor, um, I have a great uh, deal of understanding that there is massive capability in the teams that you manage. And I think that what people crave is autonomy and um, accountability right, to do their job. And I think those are key ingredients for engagement and performance. Always were for me and similar. So all I've really done is I've made sure that um, I give people that clear direction of where we're going, but I also give them the credit to do their jobs and do them, do them well. I, I take a great quote from the great, great Steve Jobs and say, you don't hire smart people and tell them what to do. You hire smart people for them to tell you what to do. And I, you know, and I think that's what leadership is all about today. And that's what I've kind of modeled myself on is that um, I've tried to bring good people around. I've tried to create good teams and good diversity of thought um, and tell people to challenge people, challenge things. You know what I said to you at the beginning? Oh, we've always done it that way, Mark. That's a phrase my team know not to say to me. You know, nowadays it's a case of, well, let's try something new, see if it's a better experience for the customer, see if it's a better experience for our people. And the other thing, mate, is I, I think the other way to do this is you concentrate on your employees. Your employees are customers, too. And if you look after your people and they know what part they play in the business and where the business is going, then you'll find that you get that extra discretionary effort, innovation. And above anything else, they run your business for you rather than you running them. Do you find I love I love what you're saying about empowerment because you're absolutely right. It's something that gets lost a lot of times when we talk about leadership. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I really like that idea because it it kind of parallels the thought I have on on leadership, which is you may be the leader, but in reality you're kind of somehow actually beholden to your team. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and 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 if it if if it works correctly. You know, ideas should be bubbling both directions constantly. And, and I'd just be curious, how has that kind of coalesced during COVID? Yeah, look, I, I think, I, you know, I was always um, of that mindset, right? Um, and again, you know, like you said, you, 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 you want the ideas to come from the people and you want that kind of bubbling away, right? So I've... I've you know, just like anything, I've had the privilege of having good bosses and bad bosses, right? So um, <clears throat> I feel like it's a simple, it's a simple equation that you realize that, yeah, you work for your people and it's a position of, um, that you, you know, you, you've got to take great pride in it and you're only in that position as a leader because of the people around you. So I think if you get your head right, first and foremost, um, that it's, that leadership is a privilege, not a, a God-given right, then you're on the right track. Um, yes. And then it's about understanding, you know, your people and knowing what you need to get to where your business needs to be. So, um, look, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's just um, 
I think it's, you know, a more modern way of thinking. And, I, and we see it in our software as well. You know, nowadays, org charts are top down, they're bottom up, right? Um, nowadays, you have people doing multiple jobs, mobility. You know, nowadays, you have people who are really right. good at what they do and they'll work, for, they'll work as a, an interim or a contractor or whatever as the work comes around. And they'll be based wherever they want to be based now. They don't have to be two blocks away from the head office. Um, for us as companies, we can get our hands on the best talent, whether it's in uh, Sydney, Australia, or whether it's in San Francisco, or whether it's in Berlin, or wherever it might be. Um, we can engage with them and get them to, to to deliver. So I think as a leader now, you know, you've got to recognise that you're in this constant, transient, mo mobile talent marketplace. Um, and how do you make the best out of that? And to me, there's just endless amounts of opportunity in that, as long as you can get past yourself as a leader and you know what i mean by that right because i do people... i do i think i mean you use some words that i just i think it's absolutely spot on it's capturing that level of fluidity and be and and not fighting against the current or actually kind of essentially embracing that right and yeah. and 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 the the beauty is that at a company like sap you're you're quite aware that the technology can do this can have, can support us in this effort if we so choose if we so yeah. choose right and i think yeah. that's the beauty of what you guys are 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 putting into the marketplace uh yeah. with, with your team so tell me yeah. more a little bit about what you're seeing now i mean I, I i i i probably should knock on a piece of wood or something to make sure that this is true but you know i think about a month ago we were all excited and thought at least in the us that thought that the pandemic was slowly but surely coming to an end and and that we were we were bursting forth into this new post pandemic world and i know that i'm i'm speaking to you today and i know that, that you're under a lockdown in yeah. in australia today and uh they've just shut down a whole bunch of the retail chains here in 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 the states um because of of this new delta variant so who knows if it's really slowing down um but but I mean, as you guys kind of map out your next phase, what, what does it look like? Well, look, um, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to have, you know, been, been part of um, working out some of the solutions, you know. So whether it's been um, with governments around the world or European governments or U.S. governments around um, understanding the outcome, whether it's working with the drug companies to provide the, the, the systems that they need to teach their staff to get these vaccines produced and manufactured and around the world as quick as possible. Um, we, you know, we, we've had, you know, a, a great deal of uh, input into that. Even in our own company, we're setting up where we can in offices to vaccinate our own staff ourselves to, to help with that. Um, so I think, I mean, look, I, there is opportunity out there. I think we need to recognise that, um, this pandemic has sort of some lessons and it's it's going to be something that we're going to have to live with and our children are going to have to live with, I think, going forward. But, you know, we, we as, a, uh, as, as human beings on this planet have dealt with these things before. We, will, we are dealing with this now. Um, my personal, and it is a personal opinion, is that, you know, this thing will be around just like the flu is around and just like other things around and we'll have to make sure our children and our parents and we ourselves are vaccinated like we always do uh, through our lives. Um, but, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? I think um, we've seen huge amount of benefits in connectivity, um, in, I think, empathy for one another as well. I mean, you know, I think as a society, we've seen some great signs of how people genuinely have cared for each other. Um, and I think, you know, we need to, to, to recognise that. I think we've seen um, all aspects of science and business come together um, around where the uh, opportunity and solutions lie. But I think fundamentally what we have to recognize is that um, it's, you know, this is just yet another part of our evolution as a society and as the planet changes. And we need to um, embrace technology, science, and listen to these experts and plot our way through it. Okay. Um, I'm and, afraid, and, you know, and, and, and I think that SAP can support those efforts. <laughs> we can, sure. um, you know, you know what? Man? One thing I've noticed, and I've, and this, you know, technology um, is all it can help a lot. You know, um, businesses like us and other businesses can help a lot. 
but it needs us as individuals to grasp that nettle of change, right? And, and nobody wants to do it, nobody likes it or anything like that, but, um, you know, progress is all about this kind of stuff. And, and out of adversity comes the most amazing progress, right? If we look back through history. And one thing history will tell you is it can predict the future. So I'm, I know we'll come out of this stronger. I know the world of travel and technology will, have, will, have, will gain more uh, resilience in people's lives and business lives. Um, but all that also means is that there's new opportunities for new businesses and current businesses as well. So, um, you, you know, we just have to get our head on I straight. I love that. Here. I mean, uh, this is, uh, Mark, I, I think that whenever whenever uh, the, 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 the pessimism uh, creeps in, I, I'm going to... I'm going to play this uh, video because uh, this is a good, good pep talk on how innovation, evolution, uh, uh, w when you use technology and bring it together with, with people in the right way, can, can continue to face the challenges and, and move us forward. So it's yeah. beautiful. Um, well, listen, we've been speaking with Mark Havercroft. Mark is the Global Chief Customer Officer of SAP Success Factors. Um, it's been incredible to talk to him about the state of business, state of SAP, and, and, and really how they're delivering powerful solutions that uh, have gone well past the already uh, strong base of usage for SAP and turned the technology network into a human network that really has has uh, helped people not only kind of connect things together, but also build new ecosystems of value. And also, I would say, uh, potentially offer solutions for some of the things that we're pushing forward in this new world that's focused on sustainability. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining us on Uncaged today. Um, if someone wanted to find you, where should they go? Uh, find me online, you know. Google search Mark Havercroft and you'll find a million and one ways to do it. Um, go to the SAP website, contact you guys. In today's world, um, if they can't contact me, they've failed the first test, right? <laughs> That's excellent. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoy talking to you. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Cheers.